He's Jabari Parker, former Duke forward, and he's announced that he is one and done. He joins us on the show. How, how close was this decision, Jabari, for you to stay at Duke? Oh, it was pretty close, I think. A lot of people got a glimpse of that uh, once they seen the timeline and the, the table that I was taking uh, for my decision I took along. Did it almost go the other way? Uh, yeah, it, it almost did, exactly. Okay. What, what was it that you said, this is the reason why I'm going pro? Well, what opportunities fit me and uh, challenged me the most, and I was more comfortable with uh, taking it on the next level. But you lose in the opening round. When, when you lose to Mercer, does that affect your decision at all because you go out early in the tournament? Yeah, it kind of did because that ruined a lot of my dreams and aspirations of succeeding in the tournament. Uh, how tough was that to deal with, with the expectations at Duke, watching them be successful in the tournament, having one of the greatest coaches of all time, and then you bow out? Were you embarrassed? Uh, well, I was, yeah, at the moment. But like Coach said, one loss shouldn't um, define the season. We did some things that we had uh, you know, accomplished this year that we were, we were proud of. Would you be in favor of the two and done? Would I be in favor? Yeah. Uh, it depends on the, on the individual, whatever they're more comfortable with and, uh, you know, whatever they you know want to do with themselves. But what if that was the rule, that if you went to college, you had to stay two years? How would you feel about that? Well, I think that's ridiculous because I think a lot of people can, uh, can enroll in service but, for their country, but they're, uh, you know, uh, they don't want to, you know, give them the opportunity to provide for themselves and, you know, go, go apply for a job in the NBA. So I think that's kind of uh, ridiculous. If you could have gone right out of high school to the NBA, would you? Uh, well, it depends on the person. No, Were just they you. ready or not. If, were you ready? No, I wasn't. I needed a year in college. What did you – do you learn more on the court or off the court in college? Uh, in between both, yeah, because – um, when you when you go out on the field, you have to be pre- prepared and ready on uh, both ends and both spectrums. And I think that when I was off the court, I think I handled myself in a in a in the right way, and that that prepared me uh, a little bit more and helped me with my maturity. At what point? At what age were you better than your dad? Well, um, I'm not sure because if I can if I can show you some stats of the age. That, that I'm at now, I'll probably, uh, you know, it's probably be head to head because he was pretty successful in college himself. Yeah, and the pro, I remember your dad playing in the NBA. Oh, cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I remember, uh, and he won an NBA championship. No, he he was he was the year after that. Oh, he was. Him. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he came in probably seventy six. Is that so? Yep, seventy six. Yeah. Uh, favorite player growing up was who? Magic Johnson. Well, you didn't see him play. Yeah, but um, <laughs> you're not you know, even old a, enough. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I was a fan of the Hardwood Classics on NBA TV. I discovered my love for the game. Would you like to play age. point guard? Uh, I would like to play. You know, I think I'd do a pretty good job because I, I get tossed around a lot of positions anyway. But you know, to be did, did you grow up? You know, kind of modeling your game after Magic, being a six-eight point guard, or you know, did they say no? Get down low. You're you're going to be a forward or center. Not the six-eight point guard, but the versatility that he brought, specifically the game when he played against the Sixers. Uh, he played all positions. That's something that I wanted to pattern my game after. He's uh, Jabari Parker going to the NBA. Joining us, Dan Patrick Show. I read where you were even thinking about a Mormon mission. Was that mm. was that a possibility? Yeah, that was a possibility. Uh, but the the route that it took, I had to you know pick just basketball because I was a little bit uh, more prepared on that end. Uh, I didn't uh, you know take my spiritual spirituality into account. You know it was just a you know a situation where I, what what best fits me and what I'm most prepared for. Do you get uh, in conversations about religion with your teammates? Did they under did they uh, were they curious about your religion or are you curious about theirs? Oh no, definitely not. Uh, what. What they really they they did a good job respecting me off the court. Uh, what really stood out was just the person that I was. Uh, it doesn't matter, like at the end of the day, uh, what you say, but it's more about what you do. So they respected just the good teammate that I was for them. Uh, Coach K yell at you this season? Yeah, of course. He challenges <laughs> his uh, his best players 
uh, more more than you know the, the the average players on the team because we need we need more out of them at the end of the day, like myself and Rodney. Can you uh, imitate him though when he gets mad? What, what's he sound like? If you do something wrong, <laughs> if I do something wrong, uh, he probably take me to the side and say, "Come on, son, you know you gotta." You gotta get your your head out of your, <laughs> your you know what? <laughs> and I was like, you know, you know, coach, you you're right about that, and I just have to go out and play. Well, you can't get in trouble now, so you you know you can have some fun with with Coach K. I, I don't yeah, know, yeah. I don't know if you could joke with him too much when you were playing for him. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, I couldn't. Everything was all business. Oh yeah, well, he went to West Point. I mean, Coach K's a pretty tough dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, only Bobby Knight. So yeah, he's real, real tough. But you could tell when he was mad. Yeah, I could tell when he was mad. <laughs> you know, his facial expressions change. Well, his face gets color- red. Yes, it's red. <laughs> <laughs> it turns from you know that nice tan that he has to <laughs> to red. Uh, the player that you would probably best identify with that plays the game the way you do in the NBA now. Who do you think uh, that you're similar to? Uh, well, a lot of people say Carmelo Anthony, but uh, I take a lot of my moves after him. And but you Andre pass, Black. though, don't you? Yeah, I pass, but I have, I have a team. <laughs> oh, yeah, have a, so have Melo doesn't team. have a team? I don't, I don't really think so. Yeah, so you're yeah. like Melo. Well, a lot of people say. I wouldn't say myself. That's a But, but cool. if I said you could have that kind of career? You'd if be I could up. have that type of career? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be I'll be satisfied with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. great career. Um, well, good luck with the the decision, and uh, we appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Jabari. All right, thank you, Mr. Patrick. All right, and that's Jabari Parker, Mr. Patrick. I like that. A little respect.